Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton and I'm going to help you get that C in your GCSE. This lesson we're going to look very briefly at startup times. That is how quickly a power station can get running. You don't need to know full details of exactly how long it takes for everything to start up. You just need to have an overall view of the kind of big picture. So let's start with the slowest ones. Nuclear power stations, they can take days to be running at full capacity and because it takes so long to get them running at full capacity, we tend to leave them running 24-7 at pretty much maximum capacity. Uh, they take an incredibly long time and so we just keep them going. We don't want to have to shut them down and start them up again. Coal is almost as bad. Um, coal is a solid so we can't deliver it along pipes, it can't be squirted into uh, the furnace and so because it's relatively fiddly to work with, we tend to leave coal power stations running as well. They can take hours to get going at full capacity too. Oil is quite a bit faster because you can squirt it down a pipe. Uh, we don't tend to burn oil in power stations so much because oil is such a valuable resource for things like petrol and diesel and kerosene. So although we could use it, we don't tend to quite so much because we tend to use it for other things. It's got more value uh, in other sort, or sorry, in other uses. Gas is much much faster. Uh, so when you burn gas in a power station, instead of having to heat water like most power stations will do and turn that water into steam and then the steam turns a turbine, all you do is set fire to the gas, a bit like you may have done with a Bunsen burner in school, and the exhaust gases turn the turbine directly. It can be going at full speed within a matter of minutes and it can be generating a lot of energy and so we'll use gas turbines to uh, vary electricity output over the course of a day uh, in response to changing demand over the course of a day. Finally, the other one that you need to know about is hydroelectric power stations. Uh, there are some types of hydroelectric power stations known as pumped storage stations which is where they pump a load of water up to a reservoir at the top of a hill or at the top of a mountain and they do that overnight when the grid is producing more electricity than we need because of those nuclear power stations and coal power stations which are always on. Then at peak times, typically early evening when people are switching on TVs, they're switching on the lights, they're turning on kettles in particular, at peak times what they'll do is they'll open a set of floodgates Water will come rushing down from the top of the mountain, it will go through a turbine, turn that turbine and generate electricity and they'll get an instant or pretty much almost instant boost in the amount of electricity output. It's a very good way of getting a large amount of electricity quickly, but once you've run out of water, you've run out of power. Um, so they've got to make sure that there's a big enough reservoir at the top to be able to meet that kind of demand. All the water ends up at the bottom by the end of the process and then they pump it back up again overnight, ready for the next day. I hope that's clarified the key information that you need to know about startup times. Just remember, nuclear is slowest, then coal, then oil, then gas, and finally hydroelectric power is one of the fastest ones and those pump storage stations can respond to demand very, very quickly. Good luck in your GCSEs everyone. And if this video was useful to you, please use the buttons below to like, subscribe, or share it with anyone else you think could also use a little help. Thanks for watching.